right. Kimox 7 here. All right, we got another episode. Welcome back to Kimox 7. We got a satellite tournament up here in Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee. This is going to be episode number three or four of my YouTube poker training video web series here. Um, if you recall from my other two videos, I've already won two tickets during these satellites, so I'm going for number three. I played really, really well in winning the first two tickets by being patient, by letting others self-destruct, um, by playing a, a perfect balance between high range hands and middle range hands, and even a few really weaker hands, you know, connected suitors, stuff like that. Very careful playing low pocket pairs. Either I hit a set or I fold them. Um, and being very careful chasing flush and folding a lot of stuff when I'm under the gun. You know, when I'm out of position. I mean, that's poker, poker 101 right there. If you're in early position, you gotta be super cautious, be super selective. If you're in late position, use it to your advantage. So, today's goal is one goal. There's only one goal today. It's to win another ticket. If I do, that's number three. What's a ticket? It's a satellite ticket into a larger satellite tournament. And that larger satellite tournament costs $250 if you buy it in directly. So I already got two invites into that larger tournament by playing these $65 satellites. And if you place in the top 20% of the $250 satellite, you win a ticket to the main event, which has a prize pool of over $200,000. That main event is happening in a couple weeks, uh, in early April, actually. So, another thing I want to talk about here is uh, cash games. With each cash game that you enter, you need to kind of set some ground rules for yourself. Don't just jump into it with no plan. Just have a time limit, have a goal. And when you hit that time limit or you hit that goal, get up and leave. Let me give you some examples. Let's say you have three hours to have a three hour session and you're gonna start out with a hundred bucks. And your goal for that three hundred three hour session is to either end up a hundred or two hundred. On the high end, you wanna be up a couple hundred bucks. On the low end, maybe a hundred. So at the end of those three hours, if you're down, you walk. If at the end of those three hours, you're only up 50 bucks, you leave no matter what. At the end of those three hours, if you're up 300, let's say you totally exceeded your goal, you walk. So my theme here is you leave no matter what at the end of three hours. At the end of three hours, let's say you're down 100 bucks. I mean, you just went busto you fucking leave. You leave no matter what. You can't go entering a session just with, oh, I'm just gonna play as long as I want. I'll just play till I feel tired. I'll play till I'm up hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is totally unrealistic. Not a good strategy. You gotta have a plan of action and you gotta stick to it. And furthermore, if you enter a cash game and suddenly you start to feel really tired or really hungry or you feel the players at the table are just really good and they got you figured out, you should get up and leave. It's not worth you playing on that table. Put a lot of value on all your money that you work so hard to earn. Value that money. Kind of what I mentioned in the other video I have up there. Understand time and how fast time flies. Okay, fine, you're sitting there, you, you wanna play. You're in the best, you wanna play no matter what. It's not a good attitude no matter what. Play if you're within your time limit, if you feel great, if you feel you can exploit these players, take advantage of them, capitalize on them. But on the whole other spectrum, 
If you feel like you're outmatched, then fucking leave. If you feel like everyone at the table is all playing super tight and you're trying to mix in a bunch of loose hands, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be tough. They're gonna have you figured out. If you play at a table for with with okay, you know, medium level players, I mean, they're gonna figure you out after an hour. If players start seeing that you're going in every other hand or every third hand, they, they, they see what you're doing. People, give people the benefit of the doubt. Give people credit that they can figure you out. And this is very important because if they figure you out, then you're fucked, man. They're gonna fold when they think they need to. They're gonna check. I'll give you an example. I must have flopped over a two hour period Five different times I flopped two pair. Five different times. And I tried to slow play it and capitalize it and make money on it. And every time, I really couldn't make that much money on it. You know why? The players at the table had me figured out. They had me figured out. So I'm gonna end the video right here. I'll be back after tonight's mitt to uh, give you a, an update of how I did. Hopefully I win a ticket. Well, guess what? I got number three. So tell me congratulations. It's a great example of applying the skills that you've practiced, staying patient, exploiting other people, letting people self-destruct in the heat of the moment when you're down to 30 players or 25 players or 20 players Today's satellite tournament started out with 70 players. The top 14 people got tickets. In fact, the 14th person got 200 bucks, so that was the bubble. And the 13 rest of us got $250 certificate to the $250 satellite, uh, which is going to be happening up and coming. So let's jump right into my summary of my successes here today. Most of them mirror what you'll hear on the other episodes. Not a lot of new things, but there are a few things. Number one, I had to rebuy within the first hour, which is fine. I had an ace-queen that bumped up against ace-king. We both had two pair. That kind of shit's going to happen in the early part of a tournament when you're playing a little bit more loose hands, you're playing aggressive. That first hour when the blinds are so small... It makes sense, the price is right, to get involved in some hands you normally wouldn't get involved with later in the tournament. Especially, see, you know, that's that's a huge part of it. So I was playing, you know, some, some stuff like I normally would in the first hour, and hey, I got ace-queen off suit, played it, and I had no idea I was going up against ace-king across the table. And he played it fine. I didn't lose all my chips. Um, eventually I went all in with 9-10 of hearts, the... Two hearts were on the board, so I only needed one more heart on the turn or the river to get the flush, but I did not, so then I had to rebuy. After I rebuyed, uh, just played the same thing I always play. Just kind of medium aggressive and smart and strategic, intelligent. Really, really keeping my eye on everybody on the table. I definitely felt out of the 70 players, I was one of the top five players of all 70. No question about it. I was the most focused the most poised, the most intense, the most ruling out any other option other than getting a ticket. There was no other option for me. That's how determined I am. When you want something bad enough, you're going to do whatever it takes to get it. I'm cracking a beer here to celebrate, a bush light. Uh, this is actually a good topic. I don't drink when I play. I don't drink anything when I play. It is dumb if you do. You can't expect your brain and your body to, to uh, fully function at the level you need to in order to win. But nothing wrong with a beer after you win. Or in my case, got my third certificate. So three consecutive times I played these satellite tournaments, I finished in the top 20% all three times. What does that tell you? Oh, well, like my brother says or other people say, it's all a bunch of, bunch of gambling and a bunch of chance. You know what? It's a perfect balance between chance and skill, and somewhere in the middle is you. 
You always need to think about that as you're playing in a tournament. The other parts of the tournament. Um, I exploited a guy who clearly was shoving and playing too many hands and very wide ranges. And clearly the guy was a poor player. Didn't have any strategy and everything. And I picked the right moment, the very right spot, and he's to the right of me, to re-raise shove on him with ace-deuce. Now, I was down to four or five blinds at that point. He turned up a king-jack, and neither one of us paired the board, and I won the hand with ace-high. So, very well done. Uh, if he had any brains about him, he would be very obvious that I'm shoving with an ace. Yeah, when I shoved, then he called, so to finish that. That doubled me up. That took me from 9,000 up to 18,000. Put me in, you know, to go from six, seven blinds up to 14 is huge in the second hour of, of something like that. Uh, not about a half hour later, I was, my chips were whittling down again and I got ace king suited, ace king of hearts. Shoved that. Guy called me with the pocket tens and I won the hand. I got the ace on the turn. So, Let's talk about that. You know, were those two shoves luck? No, they were strategy. They were strategic. Uh, I felt I had the only ace going, and the timing was right. So if you feel the timing is exactly right, then do it. And when I say that, I had folded pocket tens earlier. And for like 10 minutes, I tried to figure out in my brain if I regretted that, because I would have had a full house. But I folded them, and I lived with my decision. That's all you could do. Why did I fold it? I wanted something bigger and better to shove with. There was way too many players to act in front of me. And if I shoved those tens, there was still, you know, I was in early position. That's not where you want to be when you shove tens. Well, there's all these players left to act. And you got to assume somebody else has a pocket pair out there or an ace to beat you. I wanted something bigger and better. Uh, queens, kings, aces, I would shove. I know there's a lot of debate among what I just said there, but it worked for me today, and I don't mind folding pocket tens. I'm in survival mode. There was down to 28 players at that point, and the top 14 were getting something. So I folded the pocket tens. I still had eight, nine blinds left. So fine, and it worked. Um, and then how did I eventually get the ticket in the end? Patience, 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 patience. In fact, of all three of these certificates I've won, I was one of the second or third lowest stacked at the table. I just waited it out the big blinds. Waited, waited, waited. It's going hand for hand tonight. Just waiting it out. Waiting for someone to screw up. And sure enough, they did. In fact, one guy, huge stack, big mouth on him. I've met him before. Big, big mouth, big talker. He totally goes on tilt and blows his entire big stack. When there's only like four or five players left for, for, to get a, for him to get a certificate. I mean, just an idiot. I think it was an ace jack that he had up against pocket sevens. And he lost. And he lost all of his chips. I mean, just... The reason I said there's no reason for him to get all involved in a, in a big hand with ace jack. This is no reason. He should fold that shit. Now, if he had ace king, okay, fine. Ace king suited, fine. He was not lower stack like I was, though. He had lots of chips, and he blew all those chips to a guy. Patience, skill, focus, determination can bring you amazing, amazing things. I'm so utterly blown away by my success, my progress my achievements, and it's going to be really interesting over the next four, five, six weeks to see what I can turn these into. All three of these are worth $250. Each one of them cost me 65 bucks, except for today's rebuy. So I paid 120 for this one instead of 65 you know. Um, so the next step is to turn these into entries into the main event, which is $1,100. So this one could get me into the main event, this one could get me into the main event, or this one could get me into the main event. In fact, all three of these could win me certificates into the main event. So I literally could have three entries into the main event. 
And if that does happen, I won't be surprised for one second because the brain is firing on all cylinders when you're, when you're operating at that level. You've got such an edge over the competition, such an edge. You just watch people self-destruct. Um, I've even mixed in some bluffs here and there, and two out of three times my bluffs work. Two out of three times, it's just consistently two out of three times. What am I bluffing on? Usually a river flush. Um, I'll do a long pause, and I'll put out a you know, nominal bet, and that player thinks I've hit the flush, so they fold. Works two out of three times. Today I did it, and it did not work, which is fine. Only cost me 2,000 chips. Um, man, I'm going long here right now, 10 minutes, but I'm excited. And I hope you're learning a lot from these videos. Please like, please share, please subscribe. I'm re-watching the videos and learning even stuff myself. The one other thing I want to mention here is each time before I've gone into these satellites, I've mentally prepped myself for about an hour. Not meditating, but watching my own videos preaching to myself, regurgitating all this information in my head so it's top of mind. When I sit down at that table, I know exactly what I am doing. I actually have a top 10 list notes that are on my iPhone, and I actually read that a couple times before the game starts, before the tournament starts. And that way it's all fresh in your, in your mind. And, and, and what does that top 10 list say? It talks about patience. It talks about folding ace and low hands. It talks about folding pocket twos and fours or trying to hit a set. And if you're not hitting a set, fold it. It talks about position, 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 P, P, P. In late position, use it to your advantage. In early position, just get the hell out of the hand unless you have some huge high ranked hand. Uh, it talks about bet sizing. Um, if you're going to limp in, what do you expect the other players to think of your hand? <laughs> you know, so don't limp in. It's all right to limp in every once in a while, but most of the time, don't limp in. Grow that pot, raise, raise two or three times the big blind. Most of the time when I did that today, other players folded or they saw the flop and then they fold when I re-raised again. So, um, I didn't play a ton of hands tonight in the end. I got this ticket by playing... Who knows? I have no idea how many hands, but not a lot of hands. Not a lot of hands. Once you double up and then double up from that, you can coast all the way from there. So the guy who called me with my ace king with his pocket tens, he didn't have to call me because he was the high stack at the table, one of the higher stacks. So, you know, he had a hand that I folded earlier in the tournament. <laughs> And if he didn't fold that, if he folded it, then I would have just taken the blinds. Nobody else was calling me. It was head-to-head -head with him. He would not have doubled me up. I had already just been doubled up. So when you double up after doubling up, I mean, you are golden. So he he did that to me. Um, granted, he had pocket tens. Fine. You know, it's a pretty strong hand. But it isn't pocket aces or queens or kings or jacks. It's tens. It could get beat by so many things. And it did with my ace-king. I got the ace on the turn. Which sort of surprised me. Sort of not. Sort of surprised me because I had just done that half hour, 45 minutes earlier with ace-2. But so be it. You know, I played the hand exactly the way I had to. I was down to three blinds when I shoved that ace-king. Had to do it. You have to do it. If it was ace-queen, ace, I would have shoved... If it was ace jack, I may have folded. Maybe I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't. It's a hard one to, to do there. Um, ace 10, I probably would have folded or ace 9. And I say that because I've been I've been knocked out of tournaments in the past with ace 10 and ace 9, like shit, like, in that exact same position. Um, <laughs> way too many times. So that gets right back to the same thing. If you learn and you gather all this information of your failures in the past, you know, how did you lose? And I'm keeping a lot of notes, you know, what worked, what didn't work. So don't, what didn't work, don't expect to repeat that and expect a different outcome. You'll probably get the same outcome if you shove with ace three, ace four, ace five. 
Again, if you're down to really two or three blinds, fine, shove ace two, especially if you're in late position. Um, fine, fine, fine. So my next video is going to get right into uh, when I'm able to turn these certificates. I'm going to keep trying to win these certificates because I could sell them. And there's many more of these same $65 satellites. The main event's not for several weeks. So I have plenty of time to continue to gather up these. Clearly, uh, it's pretty easy for me to get them. And I'm applying all the skills necessary. So I uh, saw plenty of fishes and monkeys at the tables today. A guy even said he didn't even know it was a tournament. He thought it was a cash game. The other guy was from out of town. He couldn't even use his certificate. I mean, people were just... So there were many opportunities for to just exploit people who were just there to have fun, which I talk about on my other videos. You know, people are just going to give away their money and their chips, then you be there to take them. All right, that was a long 14-minute rant. I'm checking out. Please like, please share, please subscribe. This is Kimok7. Poker strategy! We're on a winning for five figures or six figures. That's the goal. Boom!